What you do is you embody the hard work, the resourcefulness, the hope that this country was founded on. Walmart's commitment enables companies like ours to accelerate our growth. When we get behind an item, some amazing things happen. Knowing that I've had something to do with it, it gives me a great, great feeling. U.S. manufacturing is in Walmart's DNA. It enables our business, it matters to our customers, and it really, really fuels our growth. We came here because we want to be a part of what Walmart's doing. What she said. <laughs> <laughs>
and there's many ways that you can do business with us across channels. So I know you probably initially applied and thought, how do I get on a Walmart store shelf? And that is absolutely one way, but there really is a full ecosystem of Walmart to leverage. And in fact, hundreds of you are already up on walmart.com, right? Raise your hand if you're already up on walmart.com. Excellent. These are some examples here we've got of you uh, that you've already been hundreds and hundreds. And I'm really looking forward because I think that's a great place to grow via marketplace or first party, depending upon where you are. So I really want to thank Joanna. Where are you? Joanna McKenna. Joanna leads our marketplace team. And I want to thank you for all being here. You all came in. You spent time yesterday. You'll be available here all day. You guys raise your hands. This team will be right outside all day today. Because I know that that special human touch to help you get through all of those steps can be very beneficial. So make sure if that's a path you want to take, that you leverage that team that's available for you here today. So whether it's on store, in store, online, we know that retail has a, has a big role to play, right, in supporting the growth of US manufacturing. And we've always said here at Walmart, our, our key role is just to be an accelerator. And when we bring our scale together with your innovation and we connect that with a lot of our public officials, we know that we can get some traction. So I have a short message for you this morning from one of our biggest supporters. Take a look. I want to welcome all of you to Arkansas in this important mission of bringing companies and entrepreneurs together in one place to showcase your products, ideas, and attitudes with and around the world's largest retailer. I wish I could be here with you. Our Secretary of Commerce, Mike Press, and I are on a trade mission to Europe calling on our customers at the Paris Air Show and doing the same thing as many of you, imagining the possibilities with old and new friends alike and finding common ground to create business. For some of you, this week will be a life-changing opportunity. And for all of you, hopefully, we will leave with a greater understanding of the manufacturing and retailing challenges in an uncertain global trade atmosphere. Business is personal. And when people come together and begin to trust one another, that's when business happens. There is a certain gravity that Walmart has in relation to the rest of the world. And you are at the center of that this week. Suppliers from around the world are located here because they understand proximity is everything in business. Our entire state understands where you're coming from. In Arkansas, we still make things. In fact, we rank sixth in the nation for percentage of employees working in manufacturing, and we're at the top of the list of foreign direct investment into our state. Obviously, Walmart is incredibly important to our economy, and the home field advantage we share together is both symbiotic and successful. So I wish you all the best, and if there's anything I can do for you today, tomorrow, or in the future, please let me or my economic development team know how we can help. Good. <laughs> Governor Hutchinson, like so many other governors, have been really great partners. We appreciate him. We appreciate his economic development team for joining us today. You're going to hear more from them tonight in the closing. So here we sit. I want to tell you that we have been at this for a while. We kicked the, off this effort back in 2013. We had our very first Made in the USA Summit in Orlando, Florida. Seems like not too long ago for some of you, but a long time for me. We, we immediately grew with suppliers like 1888 Mills in Georgia, and we launched a $10 million innovation fund. That next year, we hosted our very first open call. We saw growth in categories like bikes and tea lights and wrapping paper. We continued to convene all of our resources and put things up available for suppliers, large and small. We began to tell our customers about it, kayaks, cutlery, Trash cans, you see beer, car seats. We took a 50-state tour from that moto eyewear all the way out to fish people, all the way out in Seattle, Washington, and everywhere in between. We continue to reinvent the program every single year. Um, and there are certainly headwinds and tailwinds every year, every quarter, in fact. And we have learned a lot around, uh, around Made in the USA, around US manufacturing through that time. So seven and a half years in, it's a fun job. It's a challenging job. Uh, but it really does have very simple goals, and that is the first. We will source $250 billion more in U.S.-made products by 2023. And that effort can create as many as a million new American jobs. And we're proud of that. It's a really big deal, and we're very proud of the progress. <laughs> 
We're about 94% to plan of where we thought we would be right here in our original glide path. And so we've got more work to do. Um, but it really is moments like today that create that momentum that we continue to build. Um, and I'm excited about that as well. So before I introduce you to our first guest, if you will, I want to give you just a couple of reminders because I know that you're going to be watching the clock today and making sure that you get to all of your appointments on time, OK? So first, check your app. There's an event app. You have your personalized schedule on there everything you need to know. If you have any questions, we have our Walmart associate volunteers all around our offices today in their blue associate vest. Just stop and ask, and we'll get you to the right place, OK? Keep posting, hashtag Walmart open call, and attend the supplier academies. I just want to take a moment and let you know we've really convened some expertise both inside of Walmart as well as outside. We've got Cantar and the Small Business Association. In Supplier Academy 1, they'll be focusing on access to capital, a large challenge for small, mid-sized domestic manufacturers. We've got some of our own expertise coming to you in Supplier Academy 2. They'll be talking about packaging and supply chain, all the things you really need to know to help bring your product to market. Um, and we want you to know that we expect this day to be a day for you that really impacts your thinking. I want this to be a day that you look back on as a moment in your business, a milestone, if you will, um, because you're going to be better for having been here. And I hope that from yesterday, you may already feel like that's the case. So here to help us fit this in with our full enterprise strategy, it is my pleasure to welcome our Walmart CEO, Doug McMillan. Morning. Doug. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. Morning. Today's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for investing your time and energy to be here. Cindy, thank you to you and your team for the work that you put in for this week, but also the way you managed this thing through the whole year. Steve, Greg, thank you for your leadership. These are big numbers, changing lives, and I'm excited about all your work. Hey, Marketplace team, nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Appreciate what you're doing. I wish I could take all day and just go to all the appointments and say yes to items. That would be the most fun. I got to be, I got to be a buyer for a long time. I got to be a merchant for a long time and loved it. And Steve won't let me into any appointments these days, so I'm, I don't get to be there. But I was sitting there looking at this dog treat. This, this believe it or not, this Foppers dog treat is yogurt coated and peanut flavored. And I was thinking, is that appropriate for dogs? And then I realized we're actually selling these to humans. This is perfect. <laughs> what child or human would not want to buy this and feed it to their dog? And it's probably pretty good for you based on the ingredients. And if you didn't have breakfast this morning, just break off a piece. I mean, you're really curious what it tastes like, but not curious enough to try it myself. So if you guys want to <laughs> jump into that, let me know. Um, my job is to tell you just a couple of things about Walmart. Some of you are, are new to the company. And um, we have to start the story with our founder, Sam Walton, and I want to show you just a very quick video of him, if you would please show that. And if we can, well, we'll lower the cost of living for everyone, not just in America, but we'll give the world an opportunity to see what it's like to uh, save and have a better lifestyle and a better life, a better life for all. That was in 1992, and Sam was seated right about over here when the president came to give him the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And he, I think, spontaneously described the purpose of the company. And we've grabbed those words and all the way through to today used that as our driving purpose. And he continues to motivate. Like if you look at this picture of him, he's down on one knee. When we see that picture, we think of servant leadership. and we want that to be a central part of the culture at Walmart. You also notice, this is, this is from a shareholders meeting in the early 90s or late 80s, I guess, uh, the Made in the USA signing that's there. Sam believed in buying products locally, and so this conversation we're have to, having today is very much related to his legacy. So that purpose flows through to we save people money so they can live better. Have you ever heard save money, live better? OK, good, because we're spending a lot of money to get that communicated. <laughs> That motivates us. Our values are listed across the top there. We have four core values that we want to act as our compass, our, our North Star. Those are the values that we want to drive our behaviors as a company, respect for the individual, acting with integrity. In the center of the slide, you see some of the things we're doing to try and win today. Uh, people are really busy. Yes, they want to save money, but they also want to save time. 
We do that with a great super center assortment, but we also are learning how to do it in many, many ways, including with our e-commerce business and the way that the e-commerce business and stores come together. We're becoming a digital company. As we make investments for the long term, we must operate with discipline. And we want to make trust a competitive advantage, creating shared value for all of the stakeholders. We've learned as a company now that's a bit older and has become large that we can make policy choices that will help people in the supply chain live a better life. We can make holistic choices that will do good things for the environment. So you can see in the actions that the company's taken over the years, whether it's the Project Gigaton work that we have underway right now to take a billion uh, uh, metric tons of greenhouse gas out of our supply chain over a period of time, or the work we do to give food away to create many meals, the, the social sustainability efforts that we have around the world as we try to not only create good jobs for our associates, but create a good environment for those that participate in the supply chain and the local communities. And buying products locally fits into that equation. If we can create great local jobs, we're going to have a better, better store. We're going to have a better, stronger community. So we would love to buy things that are close to our distribution centers, things that are close to the stores to help create those jobs, those strong communities, and reduce our lead times and help us be more efficient. So this is strategic. It's something that we should be doing as a business, but we also bring an emotional component to this because we care about people and want to have everybody that has anything to do with Walmart, whether they're a customer or an associate or a supplier partner of ours, we want you to benefit. So we're really glad that you're here today. I hope you have a great time and I hope you sell everything you can make. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. You know, we do have that $250 billion commitment. It's on our evaluation. We work on it a lot. But the other element to me, success really is institutionalizing it in our business, making sure that our merchants look closest to our customers first and everywhere. It doesn't make sense for every category, but this really is a local sourcing effort at its core. In fact, it, it works anywhere in the world, right? Um, anytime we can bring that production closer to the, con to the consumer, it's a great business opportunity for us. Now, another thing you saw and you, and you heard is who's number one? The customer, always. Our next speaker is going to share some details on our Walmart customer. Barbara Messing and her team lead all of our marketing here at Walmart US, and I'm excited to see what she has in store for us. So come on up, Barb. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, how's your morning going so far? Great, great. I joined Walmart last August, so this is my first open call event, and I'm not kidding when I say I've been looking forward to this all year. Um, when I heard about what Walmart was doing to highlight products that support American jobs and American entrepreneurs like you, um, I was amazed. I was amazed not only by the many new and innovative products we find at this event, but also amazed when I heard about the impact these products have in communities across America. So what you're doing really matters, and especially it matters to our customers. So I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you about them. Let's face it, we all take pride in the products that support our families and our communities. So let me give you a personal example. I'm from Maryland. Do we have anyone here from Maryland? Woo! OK, good, good. One thing about Maryland Marylanders, we love our Old Bay. That's right. So I have some right here. Here it is. So whenever I see Old Bay at Walmart, I get this sense of pride. I know Old Bay is made right in Baltimore. It supports local jobs. It's part of the Maryland crab culture, and it reminds me of home. So now our customers are just like me. 85% of shoppers tell us that buying products that are made in America is very important to them. And one in three tell us that buying American-made products is more important today than it even was five years ago. So that's really exciting. And the data shows us this is something customers really care about. Um, but you know, it's nice to hear it, but we wanted to actually dig in and actually hear from them about why Made in America is important to them. So we went out and talked to them, check out what they had to say. When I buy an American made product, I am supporting American workers. Supporting local made products makes me feel good just because I know that I'm supporting somebody that's right down the street. So it might be my neighbor, it might be my cousin, it might be the guy that's a startup out of his garage. 
and obviously we're able to help build community through supporting that product or service. I've noticed a lot of customers are excited. They look for American made and those are products they flock to. I, I just love products made in the USA. I spend more money on products fairly often that might be better for me, that I might have more confidence in the company for which they're made. I've grown up with the idea of like try to help out the local culture. I'm a small business owner, my husband's a small business owner, so we want to support local businesses because we know how important it is. That's why I shop at Walmart. They're making an effort to buy products that are made in the USA. I'm like, yes, I'm buying American made. Our investing in American Jobs Initiative helps us to build trust with our customers, and it helps us build trust with our communities. And so as a marketer, it's my job to make sure that everyone knows about the thousands of items that we are selling that support American workers. Both we sell them in our store and on Walmart.com. And that's why, from Memorial Day to July 4th, we're making this come to life in a big way. Whether customers are shopping our stores, on Walmart.com, and the app, we're telling them about all of our American-made products. So we'll have big, bold signs on end caps in our Action Alley um, and in features throughout the store, just like the ones you're seeing behind me. And in our stores, we'll host nearly 3,200 demos that are featuring products that support American jobs. Uh, we're bringing that same level of excitement to the online space. So on Walmart.com and on Walmart app, we'll have our digital shelf and we'll feature over 1,000 items that support US workers. And as Cindy mentioned, some of you in this room already know about it because you already have some of your items featured on Walmart's marketplace. Anyone here in the marketplace? Awesome. So on top of this, we have more than 4,600 Facebook pages supporting your products. We have 500 Walmart Instagram pages supporting your products. And we just want to have more to talk about. So we're really excited for today and for you all to be getting your products out there so we can talk about it. And let's not forget, we also have our seasonal tab that reaches 50 million Americans every month. So you are going to be seen and heard everywhere. So while our campaign runs through July 4th, customers can obviously find great American-made products in our stores all year long. And to help make it even easier to spot these items, we've rolled out a new Made in the USA logo. It's fresh, it's modern, and you'll be able to see it in everything from TV boxes to diapers. So we're really excited about that. We're really pumped, and we're putting out all the stops to get our customers excited about your products every single day. So a great product story, though, doesn't end in the aisle. We know that. So I have loved hearing the stories, which is why I was so excited to come here, about the stories behind your products, the why you made them, the energy you bring it, and the impact you make in your communities. Because we know when entrepreneurs are given a chance to expand their business, it creates jobs that helps communities grow together and grow stronger. You know that. I know that. And Walmart, we know that. So we're making sure the whole world knows that. That's why we just launched a new campaign featuring this support of American-made products. The campaign touches on real-life stories of people just like you. And some of the folks we featured actually came to Bentonville and were in open call. And today, we can tell the story of the difference that they are making in their communities. So we're really excited to share this with you. Um, so let's take a look. May I have you sign in on the iPad? Hi, Mackenzie. How are you? Hi, Laura. Anita. Newton. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Perfect Granola as a company? Well, we are a mission-based company, so we do things a little differently. If a consumer buys the granola, then we're able to take some of those proceeds and give it back to the community. What you guys are doing is incredible. What makes companies like yours successful? We believe that if we do the right thing for the customer, if we're good to our community, the economic value is a byproduct of that. And that is why I think Mighty Good is so successful. Tell me about 50 Strong. 50 Strong came from us making everything in America. So 50 states, 50 strong. We want to make other people's lives better. We donated these blankets to homeless shelters. We were fulfilled by knowing people were going to be warm. 
because of that. It's really awesome. At Walmart, the success of your products is not just measured on the shelf, but by the impact in your community. And we have some people here who really want to say thank you. Okay. <laughs> right now. Right now. Hey, Mackenzie. How are you? I just wanted to thank you for your generosity, for your product donation. For all the kids that have special needs, it's really important to have you be involved. I see those bottles, and I see the kids carrying them around. You made so many kids' lives just a little bit better. I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Kennedy. He's precious. Oh my gosh. And we're so grateful to Perfect Granola for the wonderful, wonderful food. We feed 450 people a day. We couldn't do it without you and companies like yours who would donate. Thank you for the blankets that we brought down to Minneapolis and St. Paul. You saved lives. I work for a manufacturing company that makes your products. I don't think y'all understand the impact you have on our lives here. Oh my God, I'm getting ugly cry. <laughs> So you might have picked it up, but those people were open call suppliers just like you. So I look forward to telling those stories about all of the people in this room. Uh, in addition to these videos, we've created a whole host of content running across social media, online, and on Walmart Radio. We can tell even more inspiring stories like the ones you just saw. Every product made by Walmart, uh, made by U.S. workers has a story, and we're excited for the opportunity to tell yours. So thank you. Thank you for creating amazing products for our customers. Thank you for supporting American jobs. And thank you for giving us a great story to tell. We're so excited to be part of your journey. So have an amazing day today and good luck. Thanks, Thanks Barb. I feel compelled to tell you that while you'll see cameras around the office today, there's a lot of work to do before you make it to the, uh, to the marketing campaigns, OK? So, so that's just us. We won't be filming in your meetings. You'll have privacy, OK? <laughs> Don't be scared, but there are some camera crews walking around. I, I will say that, um, Barb, you're right. When we walk the, the floor and we walk the stores and we see new products and we know where they're coming from and we know the factories and we know the people and we know the stories behind them, it really is meaningful. And I know you feel it in your business, too. So you captured a little bit of that, and we appreciate that. I want you to reiterate that number that she showed you. 85% of our customers tell us it's important for retailers to carry American-made products. It's important to our customer. Um, the campaign Barb mentioned right now this week is running up double digits, so it's working. The customer wants to know where her products are made. She has more access to information now than ever. We have added uh, the country of origin made in the USA labeling to 6,100 private branded products, but we can do more, right? We're going to modernize that logo. We're going to make it easy, highly applicable, a little more modern looking, and make it easy for her front of package. Because while she wants it, she's not going to hunt for it. So we've got to make it easy for her to see on package at shelf or on package when she's looking online. Fair, can you help me with that? It's the number one thing that you'll probably hear from our buyers today, because it isn't easy. Being an entrepreneur and being you isn't easy either. So I want to take a minute and welcome our next special guest for you, OK? We've brought in Larry Broughton. Larry Broughton is an award-winning serial entrepreneur like many of you, CEO, founder of Broughton Hotels, and best-selling author of a book called Victory, Seven Revolutionary Strategies for Entrepreneurs. Could you guys use that right now? And he's a former US Army Green Beret. Larry has coached thousands of leaders and entrepreneurs all around the country and is dedicated to building up high achievers to step into that widening leadership gap that he's seeing across the US. So please give a very warm special welcome to Larry Broughton. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Oh my gosh. We just did a cheer. That was weak. Hi, everybody. All right, I want to get to know you folks. Uh, as Cindy had mentioned, I am a veteran, so I want to know how many folks out here are either vets, military family members, mill spouses? Can you raise your hand right now? 
Awesome, let's give him a cheer. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. You know, I, I was so impressed when I got out of the car this morning, just walking through the parking lot, the energy was awesome. And I, could, I was overhearing some of the conversations and people were interacting and cheering each other on. Cheering really does help. I am blessed I get to go around the country and speak to organizations big and small and that you folks start events like this with a cheer blows my mind. It is awesome. We do this in our organization. We have morning stand-ups at each of our hotels um, to get everybody amped up. Because, right, we could go do, through this thing and the energy could be really low, and these next 15 minutes could feel like the worst four hours of your day, right? Or you can put a little bit of energy and effort into it, and things could go really quickly, right? I mean, how often have you gone through life and just wish, oh, darn, I wish I would have interacted or showing up like it mattered a little bit more. Wouldn't that have been, been awesome for you, right? So I want to do this before I really get going into this. I want to give you a word of caution, okay? Have you heard about this nasty virus that's going around? Um, this is kind of like a public address. No, I'm giving you. I-A-K-T, have you heard of this? You guys haven't? All right. Have you seen this ever in your life? Have you ever had a conversation with a loved one <laughs> and they did this? Ugh, you're trying to make a point and he or she says, ugh. They put their hand up. You ever done that? Or have you ever done that? You, you probably have never done that, right? <laughs> or in the workplace, right? It happens in the workplace too, right? You're trying to make a point. You're doing a presentation. I know it doesn't happen here at Walmart, but the other person puts their hand up. When they say, ugh, I already know that, I-A-K-T, I already know that, what are they really telling you? What are they telling you when you hear, I already know that? Or what are you telling your significant other when you say, ugh, honey, I already know that? I'm not listening. I don't care, right? And what happens? Their mind closes, right? You can feel it. You can feel the energy, right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to switch the I-A-K-T to this, T-F-T-R. Imagine that last conversation that you had with your significant other, and instead of saying, ugh, I already know that, what if you would have done this? What if you would have taken a deep breath and said, honey, thanks for the reminder? How would that conversation have gone? <laughs> a little bit differently, right? Right? Have you ever read a book or seen a movie more than once or twice and picked up a little tidbit every time you've seen it? Yes? No? All right. Here's why. The universe is telling you something. You need to hear this again. Sometimes we are more receptive the third, fourth, or fifth time than you were the first time. How many people have raised children? How many of you have been a child? before. You know this, right? I have a 17-year-old, a 15-year-old. I wish the first time I asked my children to clean their room, it got done. That doesn't happen. And it's the same thing with us. We don't lose that. So do this. TFTR. Ah, thanks for the reminder. All right, don't you just feel when you say thanks for the reminder, the energy just changes, doesn't it? Well, here's the thing. It's the same thing in business, folks. When you hear Two or more high achievers say the same thing. Listen up, because it leaves clues. Pick up on the themes that are going on around you in your life, okay? you got to pick up on the themes. There are things that I'm going to say today that have already been mentioned earlier. There are things that I'm going to say today that you're going to hear tomorrow and next week. Be aware. Be an active participant in your own life, okay? Listen up for some clues, okay? So why are we here today? This open call is amazing. I love the energy. I love Walmart's commitment to the American supplier and worker and employees. I love that. I love what they're doing with the veteran community. But why are you here? Yell it out. I want to hear why are some of you here. To learn. To learn. Grow, Grow your business. Create jobs. Create jobs. Make, a difference. Make a difference. These are all great things, right? When we boil all this down, aren't we trying to like break the multi-generational curse of poverty that plagues some of our families? Aren't we really trying to create legacy in our lives and our families? Aren't we really trying to do just great things? Aren't we, isn't that really what it boils down to? Have you ever had a leader or a boss 
or a coworker who just wasn't a great person. They ground you down. They put their agenda in front of everybody else's. If you want to do great things in life, if you want to do great things in business, you've got to be a great person. You've got to work on the inside. I've seen entrepreneurs have huge successes that are enduring. I've seen some that have flash in the pants. I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs go right off the cliff. And a lot of those that go right off the cliff are because they don't work on themselves. All right, enduring success comes from being a great person. You've got to really work on yourself and work on your business at the same time. So this is me now. Here I am. Um, however, I'm going to share with you some of the uh, little things I've got going on now, and then I'm going to go back a little bit. So yes, one of the things that I do, I've got a bunch of different companies, but one of them is I have a hotel company. We focus mostly on independent boutique hotels, um, and here are a few of them. Um, one has been named the eighth best luxury hotel in the country. Uh, most of them are in California. We have four in Chicago uh, as well. Tons of press and media. Um, and I'm not sharing this to kind of impress you, but to impress upon you. And you will learn here in a second, if I can do this, you can do this. I am an introvert. This sucks my lifeblood <laughs> doing this stuff. But I know that it's important for my business. And I am one of these people, I am committed to um, touching, helping, grow entrepreneurs, leaders, and high achievers to do great things. And if I take my talents, if I take my gifts and just hide them, I'm doing no one any good. So I have to get outside my comfort zone a little bit, and I know that some of you are like me. You're gonna be going into these presentations, and you are gonna be scared blankless, right? Right? You gotta push through, you have to persevere, you have to step into the gap. You gotta find that reservoir of courage and use it, all right? So um, I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry, I can't hear you over the sound of how awesome I am. However, we have to have that attitude sometimes. When you have this positive attitude, don't you just feel like you attract people to you, right? You gotta dig deep, folks. You gotta dig deep. All right, so who's the real Larry Broughton? How many twins do we have in here? All right, got a few. Identical or fraternal? fraternal. Identical, fraternal? Fraternal? Any others? All right, I'm identical, sorry. Identical's better than fraternal. <laughs> identical? <laughs> yes? So I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. So which one am I? Which one do you think I am? I'm dyslexic, so am I the guy in the right? How many people think I'm the guy in the right? How many think I'm the guy in the left? How many don't even care? <laughs> I'm the guy on the left, the guy with a disproportionately large head, okay? <laughs> Thank goodness I grew into that darn thing. Um, all right, so if you go back though, as I said, I barely graduated high school because I'm dyslexic, okay? Well, that was one of the reasons. Um, but what really got me through high school was sports. And to be honest, I wasn't even a great athlete. I wasn't, but I was tenacious. It was a lesson there. And, and I understood the, the kind of power of building relationships with each other. So I was co-captain of our wrestling team and that kind of thing. But one of the lessons that I took was from this guy wearing the groovy collared shirt there, Dutch Sturdivant, my wrestling coach, was this. Pain builds character. Pain builds character. I love that saying. I learned to love that saying when I got to be about 30. I hated it back then, all right? But pain builds character. That was one of the lessons I took from him. And then my twin brother and I went on to get into martial arts. How many martial artists do we have in here? You might pick up on this next story. The kind of motto, mantra that we had for our, uh, when we taught martial arts was this. Only those who can see the invisible can do the impossible. What does that say to you? Only those who can see the invisible can do the impossible. To me, it's about vision, right? You gotta be able to see it, right? How many of you folks, you've got this business, you're here, you have a product of some sort, that didn't just magically appear one day, right? You had this vision of it, right? And you said, why not me, right? If they can do it, I can do it. Isn't that kind of generally the message here? How hard can it be? <laughs> How many people thought of that, right? <laughs> and then you get kicked in the teeth, right? <laughs> How hard can it be? But you have to see it. You have to believe it, right? 
So uh, back in the early 80s, <clears throat> when my brother and I were teach, or teaching martial arts and competing, by the way, he is a freaking stud. Shout out to my brother Barry. He's in tons of different martial arts halls of fame now, done some movies. He's still teaching martial arts. One of the, he's just a rock star. Anyway, love you, brother. Um, we were at a martial arts tournament out in California. I think it was 1982. And I grew up in rural New York. Uh, anybody here from rural New York, western New York? Anybody? Yep, awesome. Where are you from? Buffalo, Buffalo due south, Olean is where I'm from there. All right, so... Um, so we were at this martial arts tournament, and I started hearing these rumors from participants there that the Army, shout out to Army, was going to be sponsoring the first demonstration Taekwondo team for the Olympics. And I thought, ah, that's my ticket out. I'm going to get on the Army Taekwondo team. All right, so for you martial artists, you look at this picture and you see, what, Taekwondo from Korea? That ain't a Korean flag up there. This is how my brain worked. This was a style called Wu Yin Yang Jing, yes similar to Taekwondo. However, I went into the Army recruiter's office after I got back, plopped down in front of this guy's desk, and went into this full-on pitch on why I need to be on the Army Taekwondo team. And after about three minutes of me ranting, the guy did this, <laughs> put his hand up, and said, son, if you want to be on the Army Taekwondo team, you need to be in the Army. It's like, what? <laughs> I thought they just sponsored the darn thing. <laughs> no. So he said, listen, just take the ASVAB. I don't know how many of you folks are Army recruiters or recruiters. Just take the ASVAB. It's like they're trying to set the hook. So the ASVAB is the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. It's basically an aptitude and IQ test. And so I, uh, I took this thing, and a couple days later, he calls me. He says, why don't you come on down to the recruiter's office? I want to talk to you about your, your score on this thing. And I was like, ugh. It's like, I'm going to the principal's office one more time. I failed one more test. When I was going through high school, and I had to take the SATs. You guys remember the SATs, right? Back then, you had to fill in the little bubbles. I swear to God, if I'm lying, I'm dying. I used to just make designs on those things instead of reading the questions, because I knew I would do better by just filling designs and then actually reading and answering the questions. It was that bad. So I took the ASVAB and he said, listen, you scored the top one-tenth of one percentile in the country. I was like, what? No, actually, I didn't just make little designs this time. I actually tried. And, um, and he said, no, you scored in the top one-tenth of one percentile in the country. I said, what? Are you serious? He goes, I know, I can't believe it either. I saw your high school transcripts. <laughs> but yeah, you did. He said, in fact, you could do whatever you want in the Army. Of course, you need to go through the training. You need to pass the schools. Um, now, you can't become an officer unless you're willing to go to college. And I said, uh, not yet, not on that. Um, but he said, you could even try out for special forces. I said, wow, that sounded like a challenge. I could even try out for special forces. I said, what special forces? And he said, the Green Berets. Said, the Green Berets. The only Green Berets I knew at that point was, <laughs> I was like, not so much. Not so much. He goes, no, idiot. He goes, like, John Wayne, the Green Berets. Billy Jack, the Green Berets. And that year, a movie was coming out, and it didn't come out yet, called Rambo. You guys remember that? And so when he started telling me about the Green Berets, I said, all right, yeah, I'll try that. I'll try out for that. So sign me up. Before I left, he gave me this poster. And I think it's one of the things that I carry with me uh, in my head all the time. For a while, I actually did carry this poster in my pocket. I folded it up and carried it with me everywhere. I believe you need to have talisman in your life. Like, you need to carry things that remind you of what your mission is is in the world. I've got things in my pocket that I carry with me all the time. So when I put my hands in my pocket, it's like, oh, that's right. What's in your pocket? I'm just going to ask you. So this message, it says more about you than you'd ever say about yourself. What are people saying about you? Find your back. You guys got to ask, ask yourself the question. So I did indeed go, I tried out. During one of the phases, we're at a place called Camp McCall. I don't know if there's any special operators here. You may have heard of this place before, but it's part of the training process. 
and we're out in the middle of this hand-to-hand -hand combat pit that's basically mud and sawdust doing log drills at 2 o'clock in the morning, the cadre spraying water on us, and this is what they're screaming at us. Pain is weakness leaving your body. Basically, they're saying, suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> right? Pain is weakness leaving your body. Do you remember how I started this whole thing? When you hear two or more high achievers say the same thing, listen up. Coach Dutch Sturdivant used to say, pain builds character. Now, I've got the cadre of the most elite military unit in the world saying, pain is weakness leaving your body. The message to me at that point was, pain is part of life. If it's worth having, it's worth fighting for. If it's worth having, it's worth grinding it out sometimes. If your business is worth having, it's worth the struggle, my friends. It's worth the struggle. Because some of you are going to get kicked in the teeth. I loved hearing and meeting a bunch of you folks earlier that this is not your first time here. You've been here before. You got to know. You went back. You reworked the product, and you're back to try it again. I love you for that. That's tenacity. That's what keeps the American entrepreneur driving forward. Tenacity. Keep driving on, my friends. All right. So that was me then. Yes, I did indeed graduate. Get assigned to 10th Special Forces Group. I walked into my team room and my first A team, and this, uh, not the picture, but this sign was on the wall. And this is a great message for entrepreneurs because we have been seduced by this lone wolf myth. Makes for great romance stories, great novels, but it's not real. All right? Individuals play the game, but it's teams that beat the odds. Okay? So, we're all leaders, is what I learned in Special Forces. We are all leaders. You're all leaders, right? And when I was going to the Stanford uh, Executive Program, I learned this, that the key role of all leaders is to be problem solvers. We have to be, right? And in business, it comes down to this. We have people problems, we have product problems, we have process problems, we have profit problems, right? Can you think of any problem in business that doesn't fall into one of those four categories? They're all those, right? Over the years I've been coaching and mentoring people, I realized this. If you have a product problem, you have a process problem, or you have a profit problem, you know what you really have? They're all people problems. All of them. If you're a leader, you know that everything boils down to having the right person on the right team in the right position. Right? Isn't that really what it's all about? Right? If you want to do great things, you have to be a great person. They're people problems, my friends. So I'm going to go through these. This is going to go really quickly at this point. Five-star strategies to create an extraordinary life in business. How'd you like to do that? You'd like to have an extraordinary life in business? All right, the first thing we need to do is remove the negative chatter in our head. How many people talk neg negatively to themselves all the time? If someone else talked to us the way we often talk to ourselves, we'd slap them, right? Wouldn't you? Would you let other people talk to you the way you talk to yourself when you look in the mirror each day? No. Or about your failings? No. Stop it. All right. Uh, Marcus Aurelius, who was the third great emperor of Rome, talked, about, talked this way. He said, the art of life is more like wrestling than dancing. Right? It's not going to be easy. You're going to get kicked in the teeth once in a while. All right? So just accept it. Talk to yourself as if you're someone that you loved. Have you ever done that? I could tell you, when I started doing this, I actually appreciated myself, my mood, my tempo, everything in my life started to change when that started to happen. The second thing is this, you have to focus on your strengths. This is why Special Forces A teams are so freaking elite. You got 12 people on a Special Forces A team, they're all working in their strengths. If you have team members, or if you go into work and you just feel like it's a grind every day, or if you have low morale in your organization and people just aren't productive, I'm going to pretty much guarantee that the reason is they're not working in their strengths. And you probably don't have a culture of positivity there. I don't have time to go into this grid, but the bottom line is this. Yeah, take pictures of this if you want. Um, if people are working in their strengths, you see increased uh, productivity, uh, higher morale, lower turnover, okay? Those people that aren't working in their strengths, it's all the negative stuff, all right? In my book, I talk about this. There's definitely a correlation with the productivity positivity. All right, if you have a culture that has high pro uh, productivity, high positivity, these are organizations that excel. All right? Number three, you got to take rapid action. Too many people in business get stuck in analysis paralysis, they just don't take action. We think that knowledge is power, and that truly is a lie. Action is power. 
Action is power. All right, General George Patton, one of the greatest generals out there, said this. A good plan, violently executed today, is better than a perfect plan next week. He didn't say a stellar plan or an awesome plan. Just a good plan. But start. Take action. Why does he say this? Why do you say, oh, you've got to have an excellent plan or a perfect plan? Because no plan survives contact with the enemy. When rounds start coming down range, all those beautifully laid out plans go out the window. In business, the enemy is what? Changing market conditions. Competitor opens up across the street. You lose your patents, right? All kinds of stuff happens. All right, so why don't we take action, though? If we know we should take action, when I said that's how a lot of heads nodding, why don't you take action on things that you know you should be taking action on? Fear. I heard it up here. Fear. And there's all kinds of things that we're afraid of, right? right? One of the things is failure. A lot of us are afraid of failure. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to encourage you to expect failure. Embrace failure. If you're not failing, if you're not making mistakes, well, guess what? You're not changing. You're not innovating. Change and innovation does not come without failure and mistakes. We have to change our mindset on, on this a little bit, okay? If you're not failing, you're not moving fast enough or getting close enough to your fullest potential. That is just a fact, my friends. You must fail. You must fail often. It's how do you respond to that failure? Do you go back to the office and curl up in the fetal position and cry for six months? Right? Or do you go back and learn from it? What did we do right? What did we do wrong? How can we improve the next time? Right? Because sometimes what we call failure is really just that necessary struggle that we ought to be calling learning. It's learning. Okay? Learning fuels preparation, my friends. Preparation fuels courage. Think about this. If you're going out, if you've been in a sporting event and you've been training and practicing hard, right, you feel more prepared. You're ready to step out there on the mat, right? And then courage, well, courage just changes everything. How many times of your life have you backed away for the lack of courage? Courage changes everything. I don't care whether it's relationships, whether it's business, I don't care. Courage changes everything. Number five is this, the pursuit of excellence. The Greeks had a term called arete, the pursuit of excellence in everything that you do. How would your life be different if you stopped phoning in your performance? in your relationship at home, the relationship with your children, your performance at work, and you actually pursued excellence in everything that you did, how would your life be different? How would your organization be different if that was the culture in your organization? Not the pursuit of, excell I mean, not the pursuit of perfection, but the pursuit of excellence. How would it be different? Here's the thing, this attitude I was talking about earlier, a good attitude is not going to guarantee victory, but a bad attitude will absolutely guarantee defeat. Right? Can you think of sports teams where you have great individual talent and they can't get along? Right? And they have bad attitudes and they fail, right? So we're about to wrap here. How many people have ever taught a child how to ride a bike? How many people have ever rode a bike? Okay, you got it, right? How did that go? All right. So you got the child on the bike and you're holding on to the back of it like dad is here and you're running alongside, right? Pedal, 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 go, go. And the kid starts pedaling. And what invariably happens? They fall, they crash into the car that's parked along the street, or they go into the bushes, right? And as the good guardian and parent, you run over to them and say, you suck, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Whoever told you that you could ride a bike? <laughs> right? That's what you do, right? No, you say, Hey, here's what you did right. You got this. You can do this. Come on, let's get back on. Here's what you did wrong. Let's try it again, right? Isn't that how it goes? That's how you should be running your business, right? Cheer people on. Cheering works. I want you to watch this. Oh, you're not just going to walk away and give up. I'm stuck. You can get that. That's yours. Nobody else. Get in there and give it some heat. Give it some heat. Get it some heat. Get in there. And you get it. You go in there, baby. And you don't get it hard. You get it. You get it. Get it. Get it. That's the one right there. You get it. Yes. All right. Yep.
right? That's, that's, the, that's, what, that's the kind of organization I want. That's the organization I want you guys to have, all right? Thank you for your time. All right, folks, go get them, all right? Thank you. Right. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> Larry, I want you to teach me how to get my 17-year-old to say thanks for the reminder instead of this. If you figure that out, I think I can really, really get my own nugget out of that. Thank you, and I want you all to know that Larry's going to be with us this morning with his book right outside. So if you're interested in speaking with him, he's going to be signing books. We sell them on walmart.com. So take one more pass through Larry um, this afternoon. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate that. Now, I want you to know, too, that um, open call, as exciting as this day really is for you and for us, every day our Walmart buyers are out there looking for great products. They're always looking for U.S.-made products, of course, sustainable products, any type of product that really brings our customer the everyday low price product that she wants when and where she wants to buy it, and that's changing quickly, right? So here to tell us a little bit more about that and to bring us home this morning is our Chief Merchandising Officer, Steve Braspies. All right, how are you? Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. How's everybody doing? Excited to get going? All right, I'm the only thing that stands between you and the end. So, um, But I have to tell you, I really think this is arguably the best day of the year at Walmart because it's really a thrill to meet so many of you, get to hear your stories on how you got here, and to see so many of your incredible products. And these products are, they're innovations that our customers really want, really need. It's items that make their lives easier, make their lives better. And the great part is they're all from right here in America, which is just awesome. But, you know, it's more than that. So at Walmart, if you work with some of my teams here, we, our days are jam-packed, right? We spend all our days in meetings, and we're talking about important things. We're talking about sales. We're talking about customers. Um, Larry, we're talking about how to make some profit along the way, right? We're trying to do that. But I'll also tell you, that what we really like to do is spend time with you and really spend time on your innovative products that really make a difference because what you all do is embody hard work, resourcefulness, and really it's a hope that this country was fundamentally founded on and built on. So what you represent is the relentless pursuit of the American dream. It's your energy, it's your passion, it's your absolute conviction in what you've created. You have to believe in it. You've created jobs, and for all of us, it's really, truly inspiring to get to know you and get to meet you. So thank you. And frankly, you're a reminder of why we're in business. So we're in business to serve customers and to sell products, to sell your products. And you help us deliver on the brand promise that Doug talked about earlier, help people save money so they can live better. And I want all of you to know that we're here to help you, right? Help you get your products in front of the 145 million customers who are walking into Walmart stores every single week. Help you create even more jobs, help fuel the optimism that you have, and simply said, what we really want to do is we want to help each and every one of you realize the American dream, okay? Just like Sam Walton did. Sam Walton was passionate about growth, and today is really about how we can help you grow. Now, it's not always easy, right? There's bumps in the road. But what we want you to know is that we want to be your partner. And we want to help all of you to succeed. Because when you succeed, we succeed. And all of our communities succeed at the same time. So there's a lot of really, really amazing stories that we get to see. Like Marissa Sergi, right? She's a third generation winemaker. And she created Redhead Wines at 19 years old when she was still an undergrad at Cornell. She was only 19 when she did this. And Marissa was here back in our open call back in 2017. And after that, her business really took off. And she credits Walmart with getting her business off the ground. Take a look. Winemaking is part of my family history. I know looking back in my elementary memory book, I wrote down in fifth grade that I wanted to grow up to become a winemaker. So being around it all my life inspired me to want to pursue it. Cornell University offered a winemaking degree called Viticulture and Analogy, and I thought it was meant to be. 
I proposed instead of doing traditional vineyard or lab research that I would create a label and see if I can bring it to market. So that's how the Redhead label was born. I received an email from the Youngstown Business Incubator to pitch Walmart in 2017. I was very nervous because I knew it was a huge opportunity. The buyers did say yes right away in my open call pitch. I wasn't 100% sure if they said yes or not, so I asked them, like, is this a yes? And they said yes, and I was just so excited. <laughs> Here at Lufabella, we make three wines from Walmart, the Redhead Red Blend, the Redhead Rosé, and the Purple Rain Concord. We are able to sell in over 150 stores in the state of Ohio and West Virginia. When I go into a Walmart and see the wines that I've made on the shelf, it is an indescribable feeling because I know how difficult it is to have that shelf space I always say redhead wine is for life's sweet and spicy moments, and I think my customers agree. I'm Marissa Sergi, and I'm a proud Walmart supplier. Could you please help me welcome Marissa? Marissa, can you join me up here? So, why don't you tell us a little, well actually first before we start. So you were 19, so what's the drinking age? So. How does, how does that work? In the state of Ohio, you are legally allowed to consume alcohol of both your parents' consent, but I only did it for educational purposes. So, um, you know, I had to make sure the wine was good to go for the shelves of Walmart, so it was definitely a great opportunity to learn wine from a young age and to be able to make the product shelf ready. Great. So um, you were here in 2017. Tell us a little bit about the experience that you, when you were here. It was absolutely life changing. I honestly didn't think I had the chance to make it on the shelf because we were a small company from Youngstown, Ohio, making California style wine. But it was an amazing opportunity to come here, see the amazing bright personality of Walmart and how welcoming all the associates were for everyone here at Open Call. I felt comfortable and confident and walked in that meeting and received a yes, and I'm very grateful. That's great. So, <laughs> so that was a couple of years ago. What have you been up to since then? Tell us a little bit about your business. Yes, so Redhead, Red Blend, and Rosé is made at Luva Bella Winery, which is owned by my parents. And I was able to take the opportunity to sell the wines on a test market. The 60 square feet that were allotted to my products in 60 stores not only impacted our business to next year double the manufacturing facility, but we were able to create over six new full-time positions in the town of Youngstown, Ohio, which I'm sure you guys all have seen that recently GM Lordstown has closed, losing thousands of jobs to my community. Don't get me wrong, we're a small drop in the bucket, but knowing that every day I'm able to grow and provide new jobs and impact at least a few families in my area is very exciting. Good for you. Thank you. So what's next? I have big dreams. I'm really excited to meet with the buyers today. Thank you, Cassidy, for accompanying me today. I just want to grow appropriately, not bite off too much that I can chew, and make sure that we are meeting the on-time in full expectations. But my big dream. I'll clap for that. That's good. <laughs> My big dream is to one day sell Redhead, Red Blend, Rosé in our new Purple Rain Concord in all Walmart stores nationally. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> what a great story. And now I understand a little more about the drinking age in Ohio. I was a little nervous about that when we were doing this, but it's good to know. Um, but, you know, what a great example of, Larry, some of the things you were talking about, having vision right? A great example of that, and we appreciate your partnership and for trusting us, so thank you very much. Can we appreciate her one more time? So, you know, it's stories like Marissa's that really make me proud of what we do here every single day at Walmart, and it's why we're committed more than ever to manu uh, U.S. manufacturing. Now, 
as I said at the top, this is the best day of the year at Walmart because it's all about product, and it's about your product. So let's talk about a couple items. Now, as you might remember, we asked you to submit videos before you came here, and so we can understand a little bit more about your product and see what you've got. So nearly 300 of you, Cindy, 300, which is a pretty good number, actually sent in videos. And we had a great time watching them. So here are a couple that rose to the top. I'm Sean Lee from Sweetie Ice Cream, headquartered in Los Angeles. Our premium ice cream is made from farm fresh California milk and wrapped with sweet rice dough from locally sourced sweet rice flour. We don't use any artificial colors, sweeteners, or flavors. Sweetie is a fun and new colorful way to experience ice cream in the palm of your hands for 100 calories or less. Welcome to Foppers. Our company was started 15 years ago for the love of our Black Lab Holly. We wanted a nutritional treat that was fun for her to eat. 15 years and four generations of family involvement later, we've grown into a multi-million dollar company. It's manufactured 100% in the US and sourced in North America. Our peanut flavored Jumbo Bone 3 pack is perfect for your best friend, your neighbor's dog, or that cute little dog at the dog park. It's a treat and a business you can really put your paw behind. So, Sean, Michelle, could you join me up here? Would you welcome them, please? So why don't you tell us a little bit about your products and what being here today means for you? Um, today is just, it's really uh, unimaginable. We really Come on over here and join me in the middle. That'd be up, up front, pitch your product, okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hi, everyone. I'm Sean with uh, Sweetie Ice Cream. We're based in Los Angeles, California. Uh, my parents started making ice cream really just in a small scoop shop um, when they were actually younger than I am right now. Um, and then they got into manufacturing. They were actually thinking about uh, closing down the business, and that's when the second generation, me, my sister who couldn't be here today, and my cousin, uh, decided to take up the reins and relaunch the brand and try and tell everyone about Mochi Ice Cream and the Sweetie Ice Cream brand. Great. Michelle, come on over. Now, before you start, have you ever actually tried yes, these? Because Doug was going to yes. eat them, so hey, yeah, they're good. Yeah. It's, it's all natural ingredients. The yogurt confection on the top, baker sprinkles like Walmart sells in their stores. Um, and so, yes, you can. It's, it's, it's great. Um, actually, it started because my daughter had to have a puppy, and she was the life was going to end if she didn't have a puppy. We got her a puppy, first inside dog we'd ever had, and we all fell in love with her. We wanted to do something that involved her. And now 15 years later, I have four generations. My father, who's 87 years old, still comes to the plant at least once a week because he lives about 40 miles away to work. He's known as grandpa to all our production employees and even a couple of them that are pushing his age. Um, and my grandson, who's 11 months old, joins us every single day there, and he is our spirit. He's, he's the one that lifts us. Um, Holly's no longer with us, but as Larry was saying, uh, I have something that I keep with me every single day to remind me of why I'm doing this and why I do it for everybody else that has pets today, tomorrow, grand pets, we love them. And that's what the spirit is behind Foppers. Very good, thank you. Stay up, stay up here. Thank you. Thank you. So, great job, both of you. And, you know, we've been preparing for this for a long time, for this. I mean, Cindy, your team works on this all year, basically, to get us ready today. And we've been connecting with our customers, find out what they want. We've been reviewing all the products. And we know there's some real winners out in this audience. So, are you guys ready to get Open Call started right now? Yes. All right, we'll do it right now. This is the moment, right now. So, Sean and Michelle. We love your products. Okay. We think our customers are going to love your products. So you're getting a deal right now with Walmart. Thank you. Oh, my God, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Well thank done. You. Thank awesome. You.
Yeah, don't, no. Michelle just said she'd do a high kick, but she might hurt herself. So no injuries okay. today. I already did it once. All right, so good. Gonna... Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. So for those of you who get to deal with us today, congratulations, right? But the challenge is I don't want you to stop there, right? I want you to be open and really listen. We've got an incredible amount of really deep merchandising expertise on our team. Take advantage of it for today, right? And those of you who don't get a deal, stay positive. Keep trying. Larry talked about failure. Embrace it. Leave here better than you came. And whatever you do, please don't stop. Right? Keep doing what you're doing because we need your ideas and we need your innovation so we can continue to keep growing, just like Sam Walton believed. I have a feeling that we can make a reasonably large contribution with our company to providing more jobs within our country as a whole. We believe that the merchandise can be made here in the United States, can be manufactured here in this country, and be as good or better than what others have been buying. We're gonna look at everything we do before we place an order anywhere to see if it can first be done in this country with people who are our customers, who are buying from us every day. We should be doing it. It's what all retailers should be doing. Almost anything can be made by Americans in this country and, and can be done efficiently. Factory after factory, company after company. We're going to show some folks that it's the right thing, the fair thing, and that it uh, will be good for Walmart, good for our customers' bottom line, and good for our country. U.S. manufacturing is in the DNA of Walmart, and working with all of you to create more jobs is one of the best things that we get to do. As Sam Walton said, it's the right thing, it's the fair thing, it's good for Walmart, it's good for our customers, and it's good for our country. So thank you for all of the work that you do to invest in American jobs, and best of luck today. <laughs>